question. <laughs> you know, because um, I, I think people, uh, people always ask me this, because I never know what goes on behind cl uh, closed doors. Look, I'm the voice, right? Like, I'm, the t I'm, the, I'm talent. I'm the, on the stage, right? And uh, if you knew what goes on behind the stages, which I, they never tell me anything, right? They go, but this is what time you're on the stage, and this is what you're going to say, and then you're going to do the, you know, the, everything is being happening behind the scenes that a lot of it I don't know about. So um, when I uh, get a speech, uh, I'm just, okay, Bo, you're going to be in Cancun uh, tomorrow, and you're going to be speaking on this, and this is who you're speaking to, and I didn't even know where that job came from. So won't you tell me, like, where did that job come from? <laughs> Like, what, what, what's going on? Because I seem to be, like, traveling all the time and going <laughs> places and speaking, and I don't know where they come from. Um, so it's funny. People ask us, or they ask me a lot, like, oh, how do you get, you know, how do you start speaking? Or, you know, you get a speaking agent or, you know. Some, you know, a lot, a lot of you that are in the room, you know, want to speak on stages or even we found with a lot of even our financial advisors, they start speaking just because they get, when you speak in front of an audience, there's always a person in there that wants to hire you for something else. So Bo's always said, like, you show up and you give all you've got and you be undeniable and you're going to get another speech and another speech and another speech and another opportunity. So we haven't really had to do any marketing. I don't ever have to pick up the phone and try to promote him because I know when he takes the stage, he's going to do his job and someone's going to come up to me and be like, well, how do we hire him for this event? Um, so we're really lucky that way and I just know that it's due to all the hard work that he put in. And, you know, there's a, there's a few things that we do before he goes on a stage, um, which is just really good for all of you to be aware of, is you know, we find out how many people are going to be there. Um, we want to talk about kind of what they do for a living. What, is, what do they want to get out of this? What is their, are they selling something? Are they dealing with clients in a group? Are they dealing with clients one-on-one? -on -one? Um, anything that we can do to refine his message of, of stories, storytelling or leadership to what they're actually doing day to day. Um, that's really important. And then just the logistics of um, when he speaks, I want to make sure that he's introduced really powerfully and that they have his introduction video, that someone is introducing that video, that the right music is playing when he takes the stage. Um, there was a few times at the very beginning of his, his career where I allowed him to speak during dinner, and that did not go over well. Don't do that. <laughs> Bo is like, Don't why are the waiters making so much noise, oh, you know? Because apparently the waiters have never had any speaking training, <laughs> and so they could care less that someone has spent their life devoted to mastery. They can care less. And a spoon, bam, bam. Refilling the ice. You know how and, long yeah. it takes to deliver a moment, a great moment, and it can be ruined with a dessert spoon. That's how tenuous this is, right? Don't speak during dinner. People go, yeah, we need a dinner speaker. How about being a dinner speaker? Nope. Oh, we got a great podium set up for Bo. Dawn shows up. Get that podium off the thing. Get that out. What do you mean? He needs a podium. No, no. Get the podium off the stage now. And they're like, somebody, some worker is, well, we don't want to move it. We got to unplug these cords and got to go, got to go. You're really a stickler about yeah. the stage, my warm-up time, because yeah, they don't yeah. want to give you warm-up time because no speakers warm up. So then, there, yeah, no speakers warm up. And, no, and, you know, there's a couple things about the warm-up is we just find a window. So when is there a break? Even if there's a few people in the room, it's okay. They don't even really pay attention. And Bo's just, you know, running the stage, getting used to it, pre-setting his notes, pre-setting his water, um, making sure no one touches it. So it's really important that if, if you are giving a seminar or a speech that you take that time to be in the room. And if there's stuff going on before that, um, I say to a lot of advisors who give seminars, go in the day before when, when they don't have anything going on. Get used to that meeting space so that you really know it and, and feel comfortable in there. Um, the, there's other, two other things that I think we do that's really different. Um, 
is speakers usually fly in, get on stage, and fly out. So the one thing is if his speech is at 2, we're in there usually in the morning, and Bo's listening to the meetings. He's listening to what's going on in that conference. He's getting a sense of how is the audience reacting? What other speakers are on stage? What's the vibe and the feel? What's happening in here? So he knows if he has to shift that energy dramatically, or if he can build on it, or you know any of that. Like We're in the back of the room, and we're just getting a sense of where everyone's at. Um, the other thing is we always stay. We ask the client if there is a... VIP or special dinner or a cocktail reception after he speaks and we go to it together and we say hi to people and we visit and we answer questions and we be the, the people that we, we like doing that, you know? I mean, I always like joke that, you know, flying to Kansas on American Airlines is like our date night. So <laughs> <laughs> we're like, yeah, bring the wine and we, you know, hang out, we go over our notes, we talk about the kids and, you know, and then we land somewhere and have an event and then we go to the party and then we fly home. So that's, um, I think that's really important because people do really like get in and get out if, if they're really well-known speakers and they don't take the time to be with the attendees and the clients and, and yeah. then that's really where the other speeches come from. So maybe that is why I don't have to pick up the phone. It's spending that extra time that people appreciate. Yep. Yeah, you really want to feel the pulse of that meeting room. I, I love to feel the energy of a room. Uh, most speakers, they just they get off the plane, they walk right in. They walk right in on stage. Is it my turn? I'm here. Are they ready for me? They don't, they don't know what that, they don't know the audience. They don't care. They're just going to talk like they always talk. It doesn't make sense to me. Do not do that. Don't do that. People feel the difference. You felt the difference. Wherever you saw me, you felt the difference. You didn't hear something. You felt something. You went, oh, that's different. Huh. Boom. Okay? You know the difference. People know it. 